Each year, mankind battles countless wildfires in a desperate bid to protect forests, homes, and lives. But there is one kind of wildfire that we cannot fight, a fire so ferocious, it consumes everything in its path. It is called a firestorm. When you see fires of that intensity, you know that there's very little we could possibly do to fight them in a conventional sense. Tell the pilot to get those firefighters out. Now! I can count two, no, no, three fires and the wind is spreading them fast! Hey, get out of there! Which way? We've got to go this way! What you are about to see is science prediction. When a major city is threatened by an unstoppable firestorm, it will be the perfect disaster. This is a city on the brink of disaster. On the southeast coast of Australia lies Sydney. Its four million inhabitants live right next to the biggest firebomb on the planet. With its back to the water, the city is surrounded by over 6,000 square kilometers of highly flammable bushland ready to be ignited by Australia's extreme summer weather. Heat, wind, lightning. This powerful combination causes dozens of wildfires every year, but none have ever devastated the city. But if the right conditions came together at the right time, only a miracle could stop the destructive power of the perfect firestorm. Good morning. Yet another beautiful sunny day. And there's still no sign of rain as the drought now enters its 18th month. Temperatures are expected to rise into the 40s. And the total fire ban will remain in place for the foreseeable future. In With so much at stake, the area has the largest fire service in the world. A special urban brigade numbering over 6,000 protects the city. Whilst in the bush, a rural outfit is made up of 69,000 volunteers. This year, everyone is on edge. You haven't been called in yet? No, not yet. All the divisions are still on alert like yesterday and the day before, but the bush could still go any minute and big this time. You get called in, you be careful. Warning signs in and around the city alert people to how serious the threat of fire is each day. With one million people living in or near the bush, no one wants a repeat of what happened in the Australian capital of Canberra. On January the 8th, 2003, over 100 bushfires started 50 kilometers from the city. Driven by winds of 120 kilometers per hour, the fires were pushed towards Canberra. When they hit the suburbs, firefighters were quickly overwhelmed as the blazes mutated into a firestorm. There were firestorms that were, were running throughout the city. Major fire fronts occurred, and there just weren't enough resources to, to reach it appropriately and prevent these firestorms from occurring. As the smoke cleared, four lives and hundreds of homes had been lost. Sydney could also definitely face the same threats that Canberra did if the fuel was allowed to, to uh, develop to such a state where uh, you have a very heavy fuel load. We could definitely see a situation like that occurring in and around the city centres as well. And if it did, it would be worse. Far more people live here and there's every chance a firestorm wouldn't stop at the suburbs. With bush uh, penetrating into the, uh, deep into the city centre brings a lot of risk. It brings the fire threat to the front doorstep of the, the business community and, and, and the residential communities in, in the city. Uh, there has been experiences in the past where the entire city has been cut off uh, by uh, major uh, bushfires. Sydney has the potential for the worst wildfire of all. So what would make it happen? 
a weather pattern that would start at least two years earlier. The first stage is a system that plays havoc with Australia's seasons, an irregular phenomenon called La Nina. An unusually warm current in the Pacific Ocean creates vast moisture-laden clouds, which when they hit the coast of Australia, unleash billions of tons of rain. Gorged on the water, the bush around the city grows at a staggering rate. The worst thing for Sydney is if La Nina is then followed by a very different system. Can't we have the air on just for a second? I'm boiling. It's not that hot. Saving fuel. If I sweat any more, I'll be as dry as those trees. I doubt that. You haven't gone for a year and a half without water. It feels like it. The second weather pattern needed to create the perfect fast storm is known as El Nino. Whereas La Nina brings nothing but rain to this part of Australia, El Nino is the exact opposite, bringing drought for months and sometimes even years. When we have an El Nino event, the fire risks go up enormously in this part of the world because the plants are adapted to the drought. The plants adapt by dropping leaves, and the leaves create fuel for fires. And the longer the drought lasts, the more the fuel builds up. Combine this with high summer temperatures and hundreds of thousands of hectares, just one spark could spell disaster. And the risk goes up even higher during the holiday season. It's December and forest rangers are on high alert. Now you guys know how to keep an eye out for snakes, don't you? Because if one creeps up behind you and you're unaware, you're done for. <laughs> I'm not joking. I want to jump out at any time. Good afternoon. Is everything okay out here? Fine. Just like to remind everybody that there is a total fire ban out here. This whole area is at maximum fire risk. That means no campfires, no cooking, nothing with an open flame. I hope screaming's okay. Screaming's okay. But being a jerk is something that should definitely be avoided. Try and behave yourself. Have a good time. Oh, that's a million flies. It's really hot out here. If those weather reports were right, the heat may soon be the least of our worries. Well, that's just bloody great. land around the city ready to ignite at any moment, the situation is about to get worse. 80 kilometers to the west, bad weather is moving in. But this is no ordinary storm. It is called a dry storm, and it is the one everyone fears. Dry storms are formed when rising masses of hot air collide with areas of moist air high in the atmosphere. As the two mix, they generate clouds and winds. As the cycle continues, the clouds grow bigger and the winds faster. At the top of the storm, ice forms and then falls, melting as it goes, normally falling as rain. But the storm is so high and the air below it so warm, it evaporates before it hits the ground. A storm that brings no rain and only high winds is potentially disastrous, as it could drive a fire in the bush into the heart of the city. I think you Yeah, I don't know. We just got the like or something, I think. Yeah. We can go there later. Todd, what's your problem? Camping, remember? Yeah, you heard the rangers, no fire. How can you go camping without a campfire? So 